I started telling you a story earlier. I have to finish it because my time has run out. This is important because this isn't just my story. This isn't just my son's story. This is your story. It's our story, the human story. So imagine. You're on your way home after another exhausting, stressful day at work. All you want to do is get home and relax. But you can't. You're bringing work home yet again after all. You have so many bills to pay. Or so you think. You have a friend to visit in the hospital first. On your way there, you pass a billboard advertising Hawaiian vacations and you, you feel this deep pang of regret in your gut and your heart. Regret for all of the vacations that you have never had. Regret for all the missed life opportunities. Regret, because you know that had you chosen your dream for your life, you would be so successful. You would have your own villa and months of vacation in Hawaii every year. But it wouldn't even matter, because work wouldn't be work. It would be passion, purpose, fulfillment. You arrive at the hospital and enter. There's this mystical old man in the elevator which you squarely in the eyes and gives you this big, genuine smile. The old man, there's something remarkable about him. There's a, an ancient aura of wisdom, love, compassion. But even more so, there's something profoundly disturbing. The old man clearly wants to speak with you about something urgent, but you're in no mood for conversation. So you quickly pull out your smartphone and you pretend to have an important message. Little does the old man know, you stare at black empty screen. Or so you think. The elevator door is open and you rush out, but as you exit, you hear the old man's voice behind you passionately, hauntingly. Why? You stop, you turn, you look the old man in the eyes and you say, why? Why what? The cold, hard, stainless steel elevator door slams shut in your face and you're left standing, staring at a dim, faded reflection of yourself in those doors, as if you're floating in a murky void. Distraught, you turn and you start down the long, dead silence of the empty hallway. You pass room 703 and something catches your attention, so you stop, you step back and you peer in. There's a, a solitary patient lying in the bed next to the window. Their head is turned away from you as they stare out the open window at the full moon and the stars. You want to move on, but you, you can't. It's as if your body, your mind, your soul are somehow eternally, inexorably intertwined with this patient in bed. Their breathing is shallow labor, they struggle, and it hits you. This patient will die tonight. You somehow know this better than anything you've ever before known. And the patient slowly turns their head and looks deep into your eyes. Now you want to run, you want to scream, hide, your legs begin to tremble, they shudder and shake, your knees buckle and you collapse to the ground as the, the world spins into a bright white blur and there's a nauseating deafening, sucking sound, and the reality, the finality, consumes your entire being, smashing your final breath from your lungs. It's you. The patient in the bed is you. And you've just died. And you realize, never again will you feel the earth under your feet. Never again the warm sun or the soft skin of your child or lover against yours. Never again their deep, passionate, loving embrace. Your soul has left your body. And with it all hope, all dreams, all potential, die with your body in that bed. But while my story ends here, yours does not. Boys, I died with my music trapped inside of me. Do not make my mistake. Fear nothing but the safety of untold stories and dances not danced. Fear only dying before you are dead. Never acquiesce to the petty doubts and fears that we all carry in the smallest parts of our minds. Instead, inhabit, own, and sing from the greatest corners of your soul. Craft your story. Own your story. Breathe and storm into your story. Dare to forge an exceptional path, a path fraught with struggle and sacrifice, yet one whose outcome 
places you in destiny's arms. No! It is simply a matter of choice, of recognizing, sacrificing, and tenaciously following your passion, your purpose, of crafting your destiny, rather than succumbing to one. Feel grand force vibrate from each cell in your being. Hear your voice sing as music to the following world. And hold fast through life's seeming rejections. Remember, God's delays are not God's denials. And cry out with dogged resolve. I choose the road less traveled. I forfeit my right to the illusion of a simple path for one of passion and purpose. Cry out, I forego feeble beliefs in search of synchronicity with those of the greats. Cry out, I shun faint values for communion with the values of God. Cry out, my life, my path is purposeful and of no others crafting. Cry out, cry out, cry out, my passion, my purpose, my manifest destiny. And while you still have fire in your belly and music in your voice, sing your song, dance your dance, and tell your story, and do so with the passion of an unbridled soul. And as Dylan Thomas so elegantly put it, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage! Rage against the dying of the light. So that when your time comes, and it will, you will slide gracefully, fully spent, into your graves, exhausted and amazed, grateful and fulfilled, as the morning world smiles through tears at the fading of your light, grieved to have lost your flame, grateful to have felt your fire, grateful for your song, your dance, your story, grateful for your life. Because boys, the trouble is, you think you have time, and you don't. Yeah.